In this session, we will inspect a standard procure-to-pay process in SAP s using the GUI transactions. First of all, we create a purchase order via transaction code ME21N. We are forwarded to the purchase order creation screen and over here, first of all, we include a supplier, then the normal purchase order details like the purchasing organization, the purchasing group and our company code. This is standard information. Then we include one material that we want to procure. We need to add the plan for the material, where the material is stored later on, once it's been delivered. Then we include a net price and also we need to include a quantity over here. Let's say we order 10 pieces. It might be that you get some warning messages, you can just hit enter on your keyboard. And then afterwards, we can hit save. You can see the standard purchase order was created. What we'll do now is we will copy this number, so select the number, mark it, and then hit Ctrl C on your keyboard. And then we navigate to transaction code slash N M I G O. This is the transaction code for the goods received. So now we imagine that our supplier delivered us the goods. And now we need to record that we received the goods from the supplier. So therefore we select over here goods received. This is A01. And then we select purchase order. Now we need to include our purchase order number that we just copied. And then we hit on enter. Over here you can now see the good that we want to receive. So we need to confirm that we received 10 pieces of this good. Let's consider the standard case where we actually receive 10 pieces. So what we'll do right now is the following. We close the detailed data and then you can see now I can confirm that I received the goods via the OK button over here. If for any reason there is a quantity deviation, so for instance we only received 8 goods, then you can state this over here if necessary. But for now we will consider the case where we actually received the goods that we ordered. And then I can click here on post. You can see we forgot to include a storage location. So let's quickly do this. Over here storage location. We just select one and then we click on post. And you can see the material document has been posted successfully. To inspect the material document, we can select over here A04 display, then just hit enter. Here you can see the document that we just posted to the system. So we recorded a quantity increase of 10 pieces for our finished good. We can inspect the vendor and we can also inspect the document information. Over here we can also find the financial documents that were created. You can see an accounting document, a controlling document and also a material ledger document was created. We can double click on those documents, for instance the accounting document, to see the values that have been posted to the different accounts. And also you can switch between the normal view and the general ledger view if necessary. Let's go back and close the view. Now it's time to record the invoice. So imagine that the material has now been procured and the vendor will send us an invoice. We need to record this invoice in our SAP s system by transaction code slash N M I R O. The transaction is an invoice. We need to select the invoice date. Let's say it's the current date. The posting date over here is set automatically to the date where we enter the invoice. We can change it if necessary. We include the reference. Normally this is the invoice number on the supplier's document, but for now I will just say test. And then over here under PO reference, we will now include our purchase order and then hit enter. You can see a lot of information was filled automatically. If necessary, we could change here the amount and quantity. But for now, we will say that we order 10 pieces of the material for one euro each. We receive 10 pieces and now we also pay 10 pieces. We scroll up a bit. We can see the balance is still not cleared. It's 10. So we insert 10 over here for the amount. Then we click on calculate tax. For now, there is no tax included. Normally, tax would also be included over here. So we need to make sure that this tax code here is the same as the text code stored over here. And then we can click on post. And you can see the invoice document has been created successfully. And this is the number over here. We can inspect the invoice document, for instance, via transaction code slash N M I R four. We insert our invoice document number, and then we click on display document. Here you can see the document that we just posted. Now the last step is to actually pay our vendor. 
Therefore, we first of all inspect the open items. This is done by a transaction code slash n fbl one n. We select our supplier account for the respective company code. And here we select open items, click on execute. You can see there's one open item. This is the one invoice we need to pay and the value is $8.40. So this is what we actually need to pay. So therefore we now go to slash n f minus 53, select the document date. Then we need to enter our house bank. So the bank we use to transact the money and an account. We specify the amount $8.40 and then the account we want to pay. And then you can see now one item was selected. This is the item that we want to clear and we click on post. And now the invoice has been cleared, which means that we paid everything that we need to pay. We can also inspect this again via slash n FBL one N. Then we click on cleared items this time, execute. And here we can see the item that has been cleared. Yeah, and this marks the end of a full purchase to pay process from initially creating the purchase order, then documenting the goods received and the invoice received, as well as paying the invoice. I hope you liked the video. If so, then please subscribe to my channel and activate the bell. See you next time.